Welcome back to the Caribou Data Science Channel. Today is uh, Wednesday, January 20th, 2021. I'm going to go back and I'm going to uh, look at a report I did a little while ago. It's, it's actually an analysis of, uh, of historical polio data, cases and deaths. Uh, why is this, why, you know, why am I looking back at this, this history of America? Well, because we were, what, two weeks into a new vaccination program for COVID-19. Uh, as of... Uh, well, one nineteen, January nineteenth, the U.S. had already done fifteen million seven hundred seven thousand five hundred eighty-eight vaccinations so far. Okay, so what, what this will give us an idea of it, how long it takes a miracle drug to perform a miracle. Okay, so let's come back over here now. Here's our data. The data, by the way, does come from our world in data slash polio. I'm not sure what their, of course, their source is probably the CDC. I want to note here it says, since 1979, no cases of polio have originated in the U.S. However, the virus has been brought into the country by travelers with polio. Last time this happened was 1993. So what we're doing, we're, we're looking at data between 1910 and 1979, and the reason 1979, because 1979 was the year in which uh, the U.S. was declared to be officially polio-free. Uh, polio, also called infantile paralysis, or, infant, or, uh, or childhood polio, was brought to the national forefront by uh, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, who was not, a, was not a young man at that time. He was probably in his 30s, probably. And he came down with it. And it was all that. He spearheaded the, the national drive to come up with a cure for uh, polio. And it was in 1953-54 when Dr. Jonas Salk developed the first polio, the first viable polio vaccine. And that's where we pick up our story now. And it was in 19, spring of 1954 when the program began to vaccinate every school-aged child in America. Okay. So what you can see here is Up to 1979, there were 607,477 cases of polio. Of those 607,000, 59,511 died. Okay? So what's the mortality rate for that? If we say 5,9 divided by Seven. So the mortality rate over this period from 1910 to 1979 was about 9.7%. Uh, tragically, many of these, many of these child, well, many were not, while there were some, when most were not killed, the, the effects of the, of the paralysis could actually, a person could wind up spending the rest of their life in, a, in an R and not depending on which part of the body was affected by the paralysis. So let's take a look at our first two plots here. Okay. So this is the U.S. polio case, 1910 to 1979. So this is 1952. And this is 1950. This is also 19. Let's zoom in on this little numbers right here, shall we? 1952, 1953, numbers dropped below 40,000 cases. 1953 also, cases dropped to 34,429. And this here was, was when, the, when the polio vaccine began to be first administered to school age children. So it took what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight years to really knock that number down, okay, to 1,359. But again, it wasn't until 1979 when the U.S. became officially polio free, okay? Now let's take a look at deaths here again. You can see there's a massive spec in 1916, over 5, 000, over 6,000 deaths. Now take a look here. 
once again, 51, 52, 54. So what you see here is, in, in 1954, there was 1,189 deaths from polio vaccine, and it took another one, two, three, four, five, six or seven years to, to really get it down to the single digits or double digit numbers, okay? And so the so let's just continue on here a little bit, see exactly what polio case and deaths, 1950. This just zooms in on the two numbers, by the way, okay? Again, you can see here how long it took to really get rid of deaths, polio deaths in America, okay? Polio cases, again, 1953, 1954. So again, it took several years to really to really make a, a huge a huge dent. Although, in all honesty, we could say it basically went from 1953 all the way in one, two, three, four years to really make a huge dent to really knock the polio cases and deaths down. By more than half, and this, you know, I'm not sure how many kids were eventually administered, but the point I want to make here is that miracle drugs don't perform miracles. Okay, okay, you know, it's going to take time for enough people to be vaccinated to really begin to see the cases and deaths decline. It could take two, three, four, five years, quite honestly. So we have to prepare. We have to be into this COVID-19 vaccination program. We have to be in it for the long haul. Don't look for any miracle cures. You know, don't look for the cases and cases to fall off the edge of a cliff next week or next month. Maybe not even next year. Maybe not even 12 months from now. But with this vaccine, we will lick it. And with any luck, the new strain of polio vaccine, the new strain of COVID-19, may, well, may be more infectious. It may not be as fatal, which is, which is an interesting point. But anyway, once again, this is just to help you, to give you a bit of perspective on the uh, on vaccine and, and how it takes to work. Oh, one other thing I'm really, I'm really interested in is polio vaccine was said to be only 60 to 70, 60 to 70 percent effective. Think about that. Can you imagine rolling out a program with a, with a with only a 60 or 70 percent success rate? The people at the media would scream bloody murder. Now, here's the, one last point. And the reason I mention this percentage is because the laboratory tests of the COVID-19 vaccines had a 90 percent success rate. Folks, listen, that number is going to fall. Now that, the, now that the vaccine's being applied, you will not see a 90% uh, prevention rate. I'm predicting with that. I mean, we may be happy with a 75% success rate. Okay. So anyway, hopefully this polio vaccine program here uh, gave you gives you something to think about. Okay. And also, like I said, it's meant to keep you get your expectations your expectations up too high for the COVID-19 vaccine, right? Thanks so much for your time. We'll catch you on a later report.